Hello, everybody. Hello. Welcome, welcome, welcome uh, to Speakeasy JS. This is the JavaScript meeting for mad science hacking and experiments. I'm Paul Frazee. I'm going to be your host today. Uh, so mad science is about building things and making people say, I didn't know that was possible. And in that spirit today, we have Carlo, and I'm going to say your name wrong, Pio Vazen. Yes, perfect. Thank you. Awesome. Yeah. Nailed it. Uh, and so today, Carlo is going to be talking about a JavaScript optimizing compiler uh, in which uh, I believe we have JavaScript going to C++ and back to JavaScript, which sounds That's like smart. mad science to me. Yes. Okay, awesome. Well, thank you all for joining us, and I'm going to go ahead and let you take over here. So let's get this correctly set up here. There we go. Take it away. Hey everyone, uh, I'm Carlo. I so I work for a company that um, uh, basically uh, works in the, in the space of compilers, compilers from general from C plus plus let's say to uh, JavaScript world. The idea here is uh, yeah, there, there are many ideas, but it doesn't matter what the company do really. What um, So the um, sorry, I, I'm uh, slightly oh. emotional, but uh, it doesn't matter. So uh, I work on a um, on a compiler from uh, uh, C++ to JavaScript. What this means that um, you can do. I, I will show you directly what uh, what, uh, what what I do at work, and then we will take it from there. So I will share the screen here. Um, allow built-in display. Share. So, and uh, we will take it from. So, my a day at work is basically looking at this um, this terminal, and uh, what uh, I do is uh, uh, building a compiler from C++ to JavaScript. I need to first explain what this is and then uh, we will go to with the rest so I, I will try to show you something so this um, so we will uh, we will start from the very basics we will start with the um, we will start with an empty file. So let's say we take an empty C++ file and we compile this to to C++ to JavaScript. What happens magically is that uh, there will be some. These are some leftovers of the compilation, but basically this will do absolutely nothing. I apologize to interrupt, but do you mind zooming in your uh, console a little bit? Yes, sure. Sorry. Perfect. I think that should be about right. If it's still too small, let us know in the chat. Yeah. Anyway. Thank you. So, uh, what's happening here? We we go with something slightly more complex, and uh, we took uh, we take um, so in C plus plus word as this main function. It doesn't matter what it does. Let's say we um, we want to print say. Hi, I am Carlo. Hello. This is somehow valid C. So. And we compile this. It takes a bit. And we check empty file and now the file is not empty anymore there are a bunch of uh, there are a bunch of functions and uh, especially it will be called the main and a bunch of things will happen uh, and we do node empty.js and something uh, print to screen now here what's happening is that basically all the uh, sd library machinery of the c++ is being translated to actual javascript code it's, uh, this is strange JavaScript code. It's uh, very, it resembles very much. Yeah, 
I, it is very strange JavaScript code, something that uh, you will not write by hand. But what, what I do at work is basically have a have um, build a machine that basically taking something that uh, that's I don't know calls uh, calls some complex library, translate all the library into into JavaScript, you know, an equivalent JavaScript. So this is a small demonstration. Is uh, so th th there are a couple of questions. First one is, uh, does this make sense? And uh, I'm not sure, but yeah, in some cases, I think it makes sense. For printing strings, probably it would be, it would be an easier just to write uh, console log and, uh, and the same equivalent in, uh, to write just console log. And uh, we, we are actually using console log, obviously, uh, uh, under the hood, console. If you look for a console, there will be a call to console at some point. Now, what's the point that this uh, this um, this file will be? I don't know. It will be pre pretty big. There are currently um, very few optimization done on this, so it's uh, it's not surprising. What uh, what the point is, though, is that. Um, what happens here is that exactly the same logic that exists in C++ has been translated. So possibly every bug that has been that there was in C++ has been translated, and uh, this was doable by uh, this is normally done uh, by humans by, by translating uh, the code by hand, but it's not very comfortable. So so say that instead of uh, doing uh, of uh, compiling, um, uh, writing to a stream, you want to compile something that has to do with, uh, with some mathematical problem or some, some complex algorithm about something, then, uh, it, it will not become, be, uh, become you know, unreasonable the fact that you, you want to have the compilation done automatically. So, uh, this is what the tool is able to do. Uh, I will just show you another example to convince that uh, this makes sense. That uh, so, um, uh, sorry. Um, so we go slightly, uh, slightly more in the useful stuff and uh, and the complex stuff. Um, What's happening here? This is quite specific, but what's happening if you can read through these? What actually happening is that we are defining a function called a sort uh, with comparator, sort comparator that takes. Uh, um, so here's the, where the magic starts. Uh, now we are instructing the compiler to to compile this function and export it. JS export stands for export to JS, basically. A function that uh, takes an array, then takes a functor that takes some kind of uh, takes a function that takes two objects and return a bool. So what, what this is all about? We will also compile this. We will obtain uh, also here something. Um, what, what, what's happening here? We we compile sort sort from the standard C plus plus standard, standard library, and uh, and here will be a likely um, what kind of sort would be this? An insertion sort? Yes, an insertion sort of some kind. Now. Um, Say that we want to use this. I use require, but there are other. So we have a we have our arbitrary array with uh, with some stuff on it. I will just print the array, and then I will call sort comparator, calling as comparator. Uh, let's say we do we compare the strings, uh, and uh, yeah, we do compare the strings. This should work. Node user dot yes. So we had uh, an original array that was randomly composed with some uh, empty objects, uh, some array, some function, and we got to sort it using the uh, this comparator here. 
So uh, this is slightly less obvious because of what um, what's happening is that we uh, we have uh, so we now we have re-implemented the sort. We have basically re-implemented array dot sort. Uh, why why one should want to do that? Yeah, what one uh, one use one one usage would be, for example, say to uh, implement it in the first place inside the engine, for example. Another usage would be that it's not guaranteed that it's it's not obvious that any algorithm you may need is available in, in uh, JavaScript. And, and then the powerful thing is is that this uh, chip sort. This sort comparator is just a regular function. You can even do console.log uh, uh, the object dot sort comparator. What would happen here? We execute this, and it's just a function. It actually calls another function, and then what the function is is something, and then that the, the, the magic happens in there. But but actually, that there's there's no magic. But that, but then for this project, so th th there are quite some complexities, uh, but they don't matter because uh, as with many things in, in programming, in the end you can treat things like black box. So now we have a, um, a machine, a compiler that I can compile from a, a strange kind of C++. So it can take as input regular C++, but it can also take as input uh, this, uh, this C++ where there are, there are pointer to pointer to arrays, where this array is just a JavaScript array. There are pointer to objects. There are, there are a bunch of different stuff. Um, so what... Uh, um, now, what, what's the idea here that I had at some point? So, um, so say that you have a, so at work I'm used to do basically to work on this tool that does C++ to JavaScript. Then at some point I, I thought it was mostly a joke at the beginning. Would the reverse be possible? So you could uh, say that you uh, have a JavaScript file an arbitrary JavaScript file. Can you, or, or even, yeah, can you rewrite that in C++? And what would be the advantage that you could, um, you can go through this process and hoping that the result would be somehow optimal. Oh, something that I, I need to show you. Uh, otherwise, this doesn't make much sense. We also have a small benchmark here. We this is the sort comparator. Um, we fill an array with uh, with some random numbers, and we we time uh, how long does it take? Time uh, with cheer with um, custom sort, and time with uh, with uh, the um, uh, native sort. So what what would we, we expect? These functions are, are doing exactly the same the same job. That they are they are going through the array, that they are iterating it and, and that they are building some auxiliary data structure, they are they're doing some stuff. And in the end uh, the array would have to be sorted. So um, so, and this is also why this is useful, that this is somehow useful, that you, if you run this, and you wait a few seconds for the result to happen, so we see that, uh, for example, this is uh, not very professional at all, it's uh, just a random benchmark done, done randomly. You would see, for example, that is in this stupid example, the so the C++ code that has been transferred and that has been compiled down to JavaScript is in this example, let's say, four times faster than uh, the native sort. So are we, what's the trick here? Is, are we assuming anything? It's something, uh, 
what's happening really and uh, the the answer is that I don't know exactly what's happening I, I have a rough idea but uh, this example has also been uh, customized uh, you, you can also check yeah this uh, we can also do like this console.log the array otherwise it's uh, It doesn't matter. You, you will have to believe me. I will share the call, uh, code later. But, but so basically, what's happening? That um, since we are providing a custom comparator here, array.sort will not go through the native version. The so the uh, and will end up somehow being slower. Why it's slower? I'm not sure, but. Uh, Possibly it means that, uh, that there are improvements to be made in V8 in this particular implementation of sort, but writing this thing by hand, it, it's complex. It's, it's also why in other uh, ecosystem, compiler have emerged, because uh, writing assembly by hand is not an easy task, and writing uh, uh, assembly like JavaScript is also not an easy task. And uh, so the idea here is taking uh, Basically, having a somehow readable uh, original source code that is then compiled down to a somehow fast or somehow... Yeah, there are two advantages. One is being faster, and in some cases this is true. The other is that the, the, the logic is preserved. So, now we have, we have to... <coughs> I'm sorry to interrupt. We have a question if you could just put the sort.js on the screen real quick. Yes. Sort.js mm -hmm. or the benchmark. The, yes, uh, that's what they were looking for there. So uh, this is a non-minified version. Uh, so what's happening is that uh, we return this function, this sort comparator. Sort comparator will be this other function, and uh, this other function will somehow. Uh, this is just regular JavaScript, so you can do whatever you like in here. Well, what's the question I missed? They just wanted to see the sort JS. Okay, so uh, th th there are a few special things that allow this to be fast. One of these is, uh, but, but this, this is not really, this doesn't matter. I, I will, um, or, or this matter to a certain amount. So I'm already running out of time, but it doesn't matter. I, I will just go on for two more minutes. So uh, the idea I, I had at some point is, okay, we, we have this machine that uh, thanks to a lot of optimization that have been put into the C++ compiler, allow code to be optimized. So now the, the, the problem was somehow minor in my view, that is how, how you pass from JavaScript code to C++ code. And uh, then uh, I went, I'm not sure it was the best tool, but I, I looked around for a few minutes, for, for a few days. And uh, I, I was curious, but I was hacking on, uh, the, on something that was TypeScript related. So I ended up uh, on the, um, checking how the TypeScript parser works. And I thought that was an easy uh, point to uh, attach me because uh, yeah, the JavaScript, uh, uh, the TypeScript parser basically takes as input a JavaScript file and it parses it down, it, it, it split it in the, it, it's, it builds a tree where basically every node then uh, will be, I don't know, a node will be a function. The function will have uh, arguments, will have a body, and the body will have uh, a set of, inst of instruction, and the instruction will have something else. And, but at the very end, it will be the instruction will be a plus. So I, um, I, hack, I, I work on that a bit. And basically, for every node, I just said, OK, then uh, um, there's a plus. So I will just write a plus in C++. Then uh, every time there was a, uh, equality between A and B, I will just write A equal equal B. Uh, there's a for loop. I will write a for loop, uh, the equivalent of our for loop uh, in C++. And at the end, uh, the taking um, so obviously this was very fragile, and I, I haven't put uh, as much uh, um, 
I, it's not something. I, I, it's mostly something I did for fun, and I will go back and um, better at some point if I if I find it fun again. But the um, so basically, w what I did is that uh, starting from uh, some uh, some JavaScript. Basically, I, I took a bunch of JavaScript file that I had, a bunch of bigish things. Uh, um, and I tried to compile them down. Obviously, not all of them were properly working because then uh, some nodes were missing or or they were using some special construct that, that was harder to translate. But the point here is that it was just, possibly was harder, but, but it, it's not impossible. You, 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 all the logic that's in a program can be translated to another program. And then from there, I, I, I I took it the um, I took the compiler and I compiled down to to a, a, an equivalent JavaScript file. So uh, what? Yeah, that was basically it. It, it. it turned out nicely in the sense that most thing it was broken because some pieces were missing. But in some cases, starting from complex code allowed to it to be somehow optimized or optimize out some function or optimize out uh, some intermediate computation or something. And uh, yeah, and basically- what you're, what you're describing is going from JavaScript to C++ and back to JavaScript again, right? Yes, yes. Because the idea here is that, uh, or, or the idea was basically that there are a bunch of build tools that um, try to um, have uh, um, the, the developer uh, write some JavaScript and then, because then uh, minifying a JavaScript file, it's, it's something that a machine does better than, uh, than a developers. But also to, to some degree, for example, uh, uh, realizing what function are used on a certain code base is also something that a machine does better. But then, uh, so these tools do, a, a set of optimization, then I thought, why don't feed it back to something that's more powerful that would be basically LVM, the uh, C compiler, and see what happens. And uh, in the end, uh, obviously this, the end was mostly a med project, so I thought this was a appropriate place. But yeah, this basically can be done, and uh, and it can be done that uh, uh, this tool can be built with, uh, with 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 time. I'm not sure, yeah, when it will happen or if it will happen. But uh, yeah, the, 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 if someone wants to hack something together, I, I will uh, be happy to help uh, and, uh, and share whatever I have. Now you did actually get kind of an MVP of it done, right? And you were able to do some yes. benchmarks off of that. Yes, it's. Yes. Uh, Data that we could look at. Yes, I um, I can. Um, so the, the the easiest thing I can show you. Um, so just a second. Um, uh, just a second. I. I'm not even. It takes a bit. I'm just uh, doing the. Um, uh, you can uh, do it uh, exactly. Uh, I built at some point. Um, you should sh see my screen. I hope. Share. So basically, I put up this uh, this web page. That is, uh, it's it's very basic. It just do does. Uh, so how does it, uh, the page work? Could you yeah. zoom it in a little bit for us? Sure. Thanks. So we do slightly less here. So it is just a regular page that uh, then uh, runs something, runs a bunch of uh, uh, invoke uh, basically a, um, a worker, and the worker will then uh, execute a test and do the measurements. And uh, there will be, um, so these are the workers. One uh, will be here do, doing, 
So one worker, this will be the original uh, uh, JavaScript code I'm, uh, I took as a, as a starting point. Um, so, so basically what it shows is that a um, uh, very brief look is that uh, I took some example and uh, an example, uh, I don't know, on this example is slightly faster, is uh, five to four and a half, and this is slightly faster, this is slightly faster, this is somehow similar, this is somehow similar, this is worse somehow, and this is also somehow similar. So the colors here are green is your optimized JavaScript to C++ back to JavaScript. Green means that's going faster than the original. Green means this is uh, somehow, yeah, I should have uh, chosen a better way to summarize this, but green means it's certainly better. And uh, red means it's certainly worse. So you, you didn't manage to optimize this. The intermediate color means it's unclear given that that's a lot of randomness. It's unclear whether this is better or worse, that they are somehow similar. So this is basically the confidence of whether the, um, the interval of confidence that uh, it actually worked, the optimizer. So I, I can, um, so for example, uh, I, I can show you so basically, for example, I went to this um, computer language benchmark game. It's a, it's a fun uh, website, I recommend, where there are people basically uh, writing uh, some, yeah, writing for fun. They're just trying to see how fast can you, can, uh, can a program written in a given language be while solving a given task. And, um, and this is the, this is the code, it's somehow readable JavaScript, but it does some non-obvious non things. It's, it iterates on a vector, it does some computation. Obviously here it's, uh, yeah, you can, it's all math, so you, you can imagine that maybe that, that there are some gain to be made. There are a lot of iteration and something. Then we went to, we go to the optimized version and we have to beautify this because, uh, where's the beautify button? I will have to. Uh, where's the beautify button? Open a new tab. So, um, this will be the, the compiled version. It's somehow, it's unclear what it does. But it, does it, it, it has to be exactly the same logic. So the therapy, if we look for, there's a, there's a while, uh, there's a bunch of loops. There are, and this is the non beautify version. I should find the other one, but it's not, I'm not finding the button. Uh, but so this source code, this horrible source code has exactly the same, uh, if, if, if the, there has been no errors in the translation. So this, uh, um, this horrible source code here has exactly the same uh, information of this one. You can see that there are the constraints, the, the, um, the constants, that the, 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 whatever that was in here has been in here rewritten. But somehow, due to uh, very, yeah, probably something could have been uh, compute, pre computed, uh, something could have been uh, done better. For example, this, uh, this loop here, yeah, the, 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 the loop would have been unrolled or whatever happened. I, 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 I don't know. This is the, the nice thing about uh, these black boxes. But, but if you can prove that, that, that the logic stay the same, then you, you are, yeah, you're fine. Yeah, so, so the point so is, you, yeah. Let, you know, so let's, let's dig into this a little bit. Cause you know, so you're doing this JavaScript to C++ back to JavaScript. And yes. now as, uh, I, I'm guessing where the optimizations are coming at it's that you're able to have ahead of time compilation passes being done. Yes, basically you're investing, you're investing time. You're investing time ahead of time instead of having it in in the JIT. There's also the JIT. Yeah, so it, it will in the end it will all go through the JIT. So the so the JavaScript engine will all will do. 
its magics, but but there have been some other optimization that are probably too too costly to be done at the um, live to, to be done uh, with the user machine time right on the client side so that aot compilation that's the stuff that the c++ the c++ compiler is largely responsible for doing that right yes yes yeah, yeah. so basically i am uh, uh the the project that i work for is basically a fork of llvm so basically it's it's one of the toward, yeah, it's probably one of the major C++ compilers, and, and that there's yeah, a, a lot of a lot of human time has been put into uh, bettering the the or writing optimization for all sort of uh, all sort of uh, possibilities or or all sort of. Um, uh, yeah, basically all sort of possible optimization have been uh, have been distilled down to to this to, to this knowledge to this tool, and uh, so the idea is that uh, yeah uh, um, yeah you can come up with from scratch with them, but but basically using something that uh, that's already there, it's uh, yeah seems reasonable. You know, back before WASM was 100% uh, here, they did some work on ASMJS. And a big part of what they were doing with that was um, sort of finding tricks to tell the, the, uh, the JIT about some type information, right? Like you could tell the compiler that, hey, this is probably going to be an integer because when you would initialize it, you would do the pipe zero at the end of it, which is a way yes. to drop the... Uh, do you figure that's a factor in part of the optimization as well as the code? Uh, part, part of it. Uh, in the fact that you... Basically the... But, but I, I'm not... Okay, one, one thing that I want to say is that I'm not uh, saying or encouraging anyone to write code like this. You, you, you should write uh, readable code and all. But then uh, the idea is that uh, f for... I'm not encouraging people to go and write uh, OR0, but uh, what happens is that if you put OR0 there, depending on the circumstances, but uh, the, the JIT engine has an um, easier job to prove that something is actually an integer, and so it can use integer math instead of double math. But there are a couple of questions that I saw now. One it was basically, uh, did I act the TS parser or did I wrote my own? And uh, the answer is, I, I hacked the TS parser. So I just uh, wrote some some TypeScript or some JavaScript. It is just JavaScript, and uh, to to obtain uh, the um, to emit uh, the C plus plus. So it was basically I can share it. I will share. Yeah, I will put together things later. It's basically just a just taking some in. It's a it's just a JavaScript program taking some some strings in, giving some strings out, and that strings that it is giving out is a C++ program. Then another question that's interesting is uh, the it seems likely that JS to C++ translation is not perfectly preserving the JS semantic, and uh, with this uh, I would have to I it I would have to disagree with this. The the idea here is that if I did the uh, things correctly that you actually are preserving the same semantic. So you, so in an example with the sort, you, you are sorting an array. You want to sort and you want to put uh, something that's... So what, one thing is, yes, if you can give more information, so say on the... If you have more information, you can go faster somehow. But it, it's not that fast, I mean, it's uh, the most... Uh, it's the metrics that matter the most. But let's say that for, in some cases, uh, speed matters or it's an important factor so one thing is that having more information allows the, the compiler to be, make better decision also the JIT to make better decision so in some cases this is true but the idea here is that exactly preserving the semantic so it's yeah did you have a way to distinguish between double precision versus integers when you were doing that, or did you have to, in your C++ code, use the floating point? I assume it would be floating point numbers. Uh, 
So on the um, on the code generation, basically, I generated uh, just double. So on, I, I took numbers and I wrote them as double. Yeah. But then uh, you can use the fact that uh, in some cases, say that uh, there's um, say that there's a loop. Even even in uh, say that in C plus plus you write. Uh, um, you start with one, you start with double uh, zero zero, and then uh, at every iteration you add one, and then you check whether you're not getting bigger than a million. Here the compiler can uh, can reduce this double to integers because it has a way to prove that this is actually an integer. Even if it's a double, it can be represented as an integer. So it can it can do something that then the JIT executing JavaScript will not be able to do because if you can say, okay, and this, you check the code, you say, this is actually going up to a million. I, I will just have to do this a million times. And it's, it's not too complex. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. Now, did you do any looking at comparing your output to uh, WASM output in terms of performance or anything like that? Because, you know, one of the reasons that WASM has an improvement is that it's doing AOT compilation. So there's always a little bit of an interesting question about how much of an improvement you get of ASMJS versus WASM. Having it in a bytecode format is obviously going to help. Okay, one, one, uh, one thing that I, 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 um, I haven't uh, gone through because there was, uh, I, I was a bit slow. Uh... So, um, Wasm, yes, is faster. It, it can be faster. Also, JavaScript can also be quite fast on its own. But, but yes, the, the general wisdom is sort of true that uh, um, compiling things to Wasm, you, you can extract, uh, extract some more speed. Mainly, uh, the main, yeah, the, 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 because there are some operations that can be lowered better. So, um, and, and the compilation process is, uh, has some stronger guarantees, so it, it can do a better job with, with, even with limited resources. But then the, the point here of why I'm doing compilation to JavaScript is that if you want to preserve semantics, um, a JavaScript object, it's, uh, it's garbage collected. You, while uh, in the WASM world, you have um, currently, the, it's being worked on, but uh, there is no, there are no garbage collection. So there is no way of allocating objects that live on the, so that there's no way in JavaScript to, to in WebAssembly to express the concept of um, I will uh, have a pointer to this object, and then at some point this object will just disappear. Uh, at some point in the future, I will release the point. I, I will uh, forget the pointer, and then uh, the garbage collector will do its its work. So, so it, it, as, as long as uh, if it's been work done, but uh, wasn't uh, uh, garbage collection is not yet there. So possibly I could have targeted uh, uh, the extended WebAssembly with garbage collection, but but it's not been um, it's been worked on the standardization. So it's still a couple of years from from being delivered to to normal browsers. Right. But but possibly, but, but I don't think in this case it would have been matter much, because if you can prove that you are only doing so basically, it wasn't work very better, very well if you have C++, if you have real C++ code that you want to compile down. But in this case, we had the C++ that was sort of strange because there were pointers to JavaScript objects. And yeah, there's no way of representing that. Right, right. Yeah, I, yeah I, I'm hearing a little bit of an echo. Right now. Right now. Um, um, so, so about, cheer, you know, what is the... What is y'all's company's plan with Cheer? What kind of motivated you to start on that project in the first place? Yes, I can show you something that uh, they think is cool, and then we can. Uh, uh, so basically, the the idea is. Uh, so Cheer is a tool that uh, that is, it's 
it's mostly used to build uh, uh, other uh, currently it's used to build uh, other tools on top of it and um, one thing that uh, I, I find uh, uh, I, I think it's one of the coolest thing that uh, has been uh, that is being done uh, recently I, I want to show you to you so it's um, there's this um, so uh, on top of Chirp, uh, oh, okay, using the fact that Chirp uh, uh, allows you to compile to JavaScript and uh, and um, to JavaScript and WebAssembly, it doesn't matter. To JavaScript and WebAssembly, yes, it does matter. Uh, we put together. Uh, yeah, my 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 colleagues have been working for for putting together basically a VM that executes uh, uh, arbitrary binaries in the browser. And this has been, uh, this is actually used for, for many things, but th this is a very uh, jerky example. So here what's happening is that, um, so here we, inside, uh, this is a, um, this is all client side, and we managed to launch Node.js. Now, uh, what the point of this is, uh, Yes, I, I write some random stuff uh, and uh, it just gives exactly the same errors that uh, I'm not sure even how to do version uh, process. Anyone knows? Uh, yeah, okay. For example, you we can ask a bunch of information about the current process and uh, this will say that this is version 8.10 of Node.js while uh, and this will uh, work the same. So. Uh, so also, uh, do I understand correctly, you have a full Linux distro running inside somehow, the browser? Yes. Is it inside yes. the entirely client side right now? Yes, it's all client side. Uh, there are no communication going on. So I can also go offline, it doesn't matter. And, and uh, you've got Node.js running within that distro. Yes. Executing JavaScript. Yes. And then you can... Uh, so you... you Obviously, executing JavaScript inside Node.js inside the browser is not incredibly useful because you you have already you can access already console log. You can do yeah, there's a bunch of to dos, but uh, you can do already two plus two two, two plus two, two two plus two. You you know already how to calculate that thanks to the console. So so you you have a way into V8, but this works even in Firefox, where's no so. So even in, a, in Safari, possibly it can work, but now it's disabled thanks to the fact that shared array buffer is still uh, worked on. But the idea here is that, uh, so if you can think of some, some executable that you need to have executed in the browser, this is a way to, to have it. And um, I, I think this is quite cool as a as project. It's that there are many, but, but the product side that there are various things that can be done. But I mostly that we are here for the tech part, and the tech part is quite amazing. And, and it's all doable. So having a compiler that compiles uh, compiles to to JavaScript it, it is necessary. That that is power. That, that that has a lot of nice properties. It's basically needed to to do to to step up and do these kind of uh, more complex uh, projects is that how y'all are actually getting the thing to run in the browser that you're actually compiling all the source to js or do you have a translation layer that's gone sorry well so you've got the vm running inside of the browser and then you have a compiler to take c++ or c and put it into or i guess other languages if you're tapped into llvm i, I assume so are you compiling all of the things that are running from its source code into JavaScript and that's how you're... No, 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 no. Well, what's... Uh, uh, so sort of. What's happening is that... Uh, so the chip is used only uh, idle of time. So that does the code base of uh, a VM. And you uh, a VM to execute um, binaries. Uh, the, the code base is in C++ and it's compiled down to a big JavaScript plus a WebAssembly file that then take as an in input another binary, uh, array buffer, let's say, or something, 
and execute whatever is in there. Right, right. So the VM yeah, then, uh, yeah, then uh, what happens at compile time? It's uh, sort of uh, uh, it is sort of fun in the fact that uh, we are um, we are meshing uh, things together, and what happens is that it will be this is uh, actually a JIT in itself. So there will be new WebAssembly modules instantiated at the runtime. So the, the, the thing that targets here, it doesn't target uh, JavaScript anymore because here the, there are harder constraints. So you can target Java, uh, WebAssembly. So at runtime, there will be a new WebAssembly module generated saying, uh, execute this opcode or this other opcode or this series of opcodes or these logical unit that we we decided to put inside our WebAssembly function. And uh, yeah, this is it more or less. And uh, all of these, yeah, basically uh, how how it works is that, uh, yeah, I, I, yeah, this is it, I would say. Uh, any, any question, any? Yeah, chat, feel free to drop any questions you have in the chat and we'll talk about them. Uh, while we're waiting for that, uh, do you have any links that you might want to share uh, that we could put into the chat? I, so one thing that I, I when I, this I find sure, I, I'm not even sure how to chat. If you don't have control over that, you could private chat to me and I'll stick it in there. Um, so this is one that uh, I'm not sure if anyone can um, can make. Uh, this is uh, something fun to hack together. This is this uh, this Node.js inside the browser. This is the um, uh, plus repo. So I've put that in the chat, and we've also got it as a caption on the screen if somebody wants yes. to just type that in. All right. Now, the second one is this. This is the what you were talking about. This is the bench. Yes. Uh, but then on the repo, you can find uh, the, the original code and the ugly code. And uh, yeah, basically, yeah, you, you, you can uh, run the benchmark on, on your machine. You can do. You can try to guess uh, what, what what's happening behind the behind the scene by comparing them, or yeah, you can uh, beautify. Uh, I I should put in the um, in the relative. Um, yeah, from there you can get to the to the repository. Repository. Very 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 cool. All right, so. Um... I don't have any questions coming in, so I'm going to ask you something that I, I've been asked before that might be hard to answer on the spot. So if you don't have any good answers, don't don't worry about it. But any projects, whether it's your own or somebody else, any technology that you're particularly excited about and uh, you know, you're know you geeking out about it lately, anything that you might want to share with folks? Um, no, I... Uh, now I follow. No, I'm not sure I have uh, anything, any secret insight, but uh, or any anything uh, special on my mind. I have. Uh, yeah, I'm. Um, no, I'm not sure. No, I'm sorry. It, it's hard. Oh, it's all right. It's a hard question. I, I had to actually last time I got asked that I was lucky to be asked ahead of time, so I had got some time to think about it. <laughs> this is something that you want to share, Bob. Oh man, see, now I see how hard that is. Um, you know, actually, when I answered last time, my response, one of them was Dino. I was kind of into Dino. And yeah. uh, unfortunately, I spent a little bit of time with it and got a little less excited about it afterwards. It's not bad, but it's just got some trouble. But I don't know. You never know what's going to happen. It kind of looks like they may be turning into like a standard version of Cloudflare workers. So maybe, maybe at some point that'll end up turning into something good. So Dino, half watching it. <laughs> 